Well, hello my YouTube friends. We are back with another video. This time we are busy building a capacitor discharge circuit for powering quite a few switch machines all at once. This is a very simple unit consisting of only four components, a 220 ohm 5 watt resistor, a 2200 microfarad 25 volt electrolytic capacitor, and two 1 amp diodes like a 1N004. And there you can see the circuit. The current limiting resistor is the 5 watt resistor. Then the power runs into a diode that creates a half wave rectified current instead of the AC that is put in. And so here we will start soldering the first diode to the resistor. And because it's a 5 watt resistor, which is quite a high wattage, you'll see this resistor is a block and not a round resistor like we are normally used to. I add some flux before I solder and then also I bend the wires to make like a little loop or a hook that they are easier to stay in place and hold in place uh, while soldering. And <clears throat> I'm using a very small tipped soldering iron a temperature controlled soldering iron which helps that I do not damage the electronic components and you can see there's the first joint made and then the little extra wire is cut off and the other components added and snipping the wire that was extending and now we're going to add the capacitor again making a a little loop in one of the wires so that it will stand or remain quite stationary while soldering and the electrolytic capacitor is normally marked with a plus or a minus otherwise you'll see there's like an indent on the one side that is normally the positive side that the indent is on trying to balance the components so that I can solder them with the little loop and there's the diode that goes with the capacitor oops I tried to make the little loop smaller and slipped so there is the components adding some flux and getting ready to solder them together so that is all four components actually on the, in the video, in the shot. Starting with the resistor, the second diode is covered by some blue tack or press stick as we call it here in South Africa that I use just to hold the components down on this little piece of wood that I solder on. And I'm using a, a lead free solder, so that's why it looks like it's a bit difficult to melt. It melts at a higher temperature. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we have to extend that wire on the positive side because that and the capacitor must join together, <coughs> as well as the AC input and the DC output all comes to one single point so we're going to add some flux and solder that wire and once that is soldered we'll add the wires to the input and output <coughs> and the reason for using this uh, capacitor discharge system is the layout that i'm upgrading had very nice Wiesman switches that had LEDs indicating the position of the turnout, but half of them were not working. So we are changing the whole system to a diode matrix system where a single button or contact chooses the route and not the specific turnout. Now choosing the route means that about four or five switch machines has to be thrown simultaneously. 
and this capacitor discharge system, even though it runs at a higher voltage, is strong enough to power about five or six switch machines simultaneously. And on my HO scale layout, I have up to six switch machines powered from this exact circuit, also with about a 16 volt input, and it is quite effective. So here we're continuing to bend the wires and try to get them all together. Unfortunately, I have run out of a Vero board and the capacitors leads were not long enough, even if I had Vero board, to actually reach into the two um, holes in the Vero board. So that is why I am doing a, a very crude construction. It will be glued down to a piece of hardboard or um, plywood and then secure it to the control panel of the N scale layout. I will do a video later on the diode matrix system showing how that is done and how the control panel is installed etc etc. And unfortunately, the weather in KwaZulu Natal, where I stay, is not playing along. We've been having rain for the past few days. Thus, <coughs> I cannot continue with the scenery as I planned, or even with the wiring, because the place I work is on my veranda that is partially open and will allow the water to get in. Now let's first test the power supply, see what I get out from the power supply's AC. And I get 17.2 volts. And we're going to connect that to this capacitor discharge system. Again, very crudely, just wrapping the wires around each other. And then I remembered I have got some crocodile clamps on leads. So let's try that. Uh, one of them is unfortunately in use elsewhere and this one is the one I had available in the garage and there's some more packed away somewhere but anyway this was sufficient for testing. So now let's see if we connect the wire to the power supply and the multimeter set to volts DC and measuring the output we see we get about 22.5 volts. And don't worry, that will not blow the switch machines because the amperage behind it is very, very little. It is like in milliamps. And there I've connected a switch machine. And we're going to see how the voltage drops. And then I also realize I've got another probe that clips to the wires for my multimeter. So now let's see, we're standing on 9.7, but I think my connection to the power supply was not good. So I wiggled that a bit and very soon the power started climbing, the voltage started climbing to where it should be at just over 22 volts. And I think still that power supply's connection is not very good. Uh, 22.3, 0.4, 0.5, and may even go up to 23 volts. There we are, 23.2 volts. And then if we touch the switch machine to the contacts, we'll see that it drops down and oh, 11 volts, and then it starts building up, recharging the capacitor until it has reached full charge again and then touching the switch machine again and you can see the voltage drop and climbing up again and this process will happen on the layout as well but that uh, sudden burst of energy is enough to power quite a few switch machines simultaneously so that does help and uh, well thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and share it with your friends and also subscribe to the channel